Um, what's the party without gin and tonic, right? But did you know that it saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire? And have you ever noticed its magical glow under the UV lights? Today we'll explore the origin, history and fascinating chemistry of this classy drink. Gin tonic, malaria and beaver anal sucks. All the best in this video, so let's jump right in! It was somewhere in the 19th century. The British army was on its way to colonize the Indian Empire, but they faced more enemies than they had thought. An invisible danger hangs over the army. Malaria. It killed more soldiers than fights and battles. Malaria's first sign were found in a mosquito trapped in amber, dated back around 20 million years. It got its name from the Italian words mala aria, meaning bad air. People believed it came from breathing dirty air near swamps, but the real cause was stagnant water in swamps or marshes perfect for mosquitoes to breed. These tiny insects spread big danger, making swamps hotspots for malaria. Rome, surrounded by such swamps, faced a malaria outbreak like the British army but a century earlier. The Jesuit missionaries found that Quechua people in South America used cinchona tree bark to treat fever since ancient times. Rome tried it against malaria and it helped. This remedy was given free to the poor and was named Jesuit bark. Since Catholic Jesuit discovered it, Protestants were suspicious. English statesman Oliver Cromwell refused to take the devil's powder, although he suffered greatly and died of a three-day fever. <sighs> Nothing much has changed since then. After Sinchona bark cured King Charles II of malaria, it became popular in London. Centuries later, scientists extracted the main substance from cinchona bark and named it quinine, from the Spanish word quina, meaning cinchona bark. In the book The Mysterious Island, quinine saved one of the heroes from malaria. Malaria is spread by mosquito bites and is caused by a tiny parasite called plasmodium. The parasite enters the bloodstream travels to the liver to reproduce and then infects red blood cells and reproduce again asexually and sexually. When a mosquito bites someone with malaria, it gets infected and can then pass the disease to others. Malaria causes a fever that comes and goes in cycles. This is because the parasites multiply in red blood cells every 48 to 72 hours, causing a fever when they break out of the cells. They then infect new red blood cells and the cycle repeats. Plasmodium parasites feed on hemoglobin, a key part of red blood cells. But they can't handle a byproduct of its breakdown called heme. To survive, they turn heme into harmless crystals called hemozoin. Quinine stops these crystals from forming, which kills the plasmodium parasites. This molecule became essential for British soldiers during the colonization of India. By 1840, the British army used 700 tons of bark to extract quinine. They used it not only as a remedy, but also as a prophylaxis, which should be taken every day. However, there was a problem. Quinine is a bitter powder. How to make soldiers consume it every day? Add water, lime and gin, of course. Gin, or more precisely, Geneva, originated in the Netherlands as a beverage infused with botanical extracts of juniper berries believed to have beneficial health effects. The distinctive flavor and aroma of gin primarily come from juniper berries, which contain essential oils like Pinin, geraniol, sabinin, terpinin for all, and borneo, all contributing to gin's unique taste and scent. You may have encountered most of these molecules before. Pinin is responsible for the characteristic smell of pine trees, 
geranial partially contributes to the scent of roses. Sabinin adds to the aroma of Norway spruce reminiscent of Christmas tree. Terpenin for all is present in nutmeg and tea tree oil and boronil is found in the anal sacs of North American beavers believed to aid in scent recognition. Um, uh, during the 30 years war, gene was given to continental soldiers to calm their nerves before battle. That's where supposedly the phrase Dutch courage was born. Later, during William of Orange's reign, Britain's conflict with France disrupted French brandy import, but increased trade with the Netherlands, where gin was popular. Changes in British law made gin cheaper and more available, leading to the gin craze. No wonder its gin was widely distributed among British soldiers to cope with traumatic war stress. So, there is bitter quinine, which you need to drink every day so as not to die, and there is a lot of gin, ideal conditions to give the world a new cocktail. In the late 19th century, commercial tonic water emerged to meet the demand. In 1858, Erasmus Bond patented the first commercial tonic water marketed as medicinal tonic. Other companies followed suit, offering variations with um, different levels of quinine and sweeteners, Schweppes introduced its Indian tonic water in 1870, which became a popular mixer for gin, solidifying tonic's water place in the beverage industry. Despite the fact that since then the amount of quinine in tonic has greatly decreased, it's still there and it glows. It absorbs UV light and then some black like, magic happens and it emits visible light, causing the tonic water to fluoresce or to glow. On that bright note, our video has come to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye bye. So, давай следующий ракурс. Следующий. Сейчас блин, рано. Нет, стой. Ты торопишься? Ты я вообще медленно говорю.